IRS requirements state that all S-Corp owners must pay themselves a reasonable salary. But how do you determine what's a reasonable salary? Doing so will affect your tax burden, and part of why you have an S-Corp is to take advantage of its tax benefits. So you need to get this right. But with the vague language the IRS uses, determining a reasonable salary can be daunting. Trick is here to help with the video guide to S-Corp salary guidelines. After watching this video, you'll know how to determine what a reasonable salary is, how to pay yourself as an S-Corp, and what the critical difference is between salary and distributions. We'll also review what an S-Corp is, the requirements to become one, and how to pay your taxes on your S-Corp salary. We'll also expose a pervasive myth about how to determine a reasonable salary. But before we get into all this great info, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Here at Trick, we provide useful information and free tools that help businesses form and grow. So what exactly is an S-Corp? An S-Corporation, or S-Corp, is a tax designation that can be elected by a limited liability company, otherwise known as LLCs, or corporations. In order to elect to be taxed as an S-Corp, you must first make sure you are a domestic corporation or LLC, and have no greater than 100 shareholders, if a corporation. Also, shareholders must be U.S. citizens, legal residents of the United States, and all shareholders must be private individuals. Getting paid as an S-Corp owner. With an S-Corp, members and owners are considered employees. As a result, they're paid a salary. But here's where it gets interesting. They can also receive distributions from the company. Let's look at the differences. Salary is the money you pay yourself through the S-Corp. This is considered a wage and a subject to employment and income tax. Distributions are profits and losses that pass through the S-Corp to the individual members. And distributions are very important because they're only subject to income tax, not employment tax. So while distributions are tax advantaged because you don't pay employment taxes on them, you are required to pay yourself a reasonable salary before taking distributions. Additionally, you can't take an inappropriately small salary in order to collect more in distributions. Let's take a look at what the tax flow of an S-Corp with 100,000 in annual profits would look like. As you can see, many LLCs and corporations may benefit from the tax advantages offered by an S-Corp, but they must be sure to follow the rules outlined by the IRS. So let's take a look at what those rules are. If you're interested in starting an S-Corp, check out Truex's free How to Start an S-Corp guide linked below. What is an S-Corp reasonable salary? As an owner or member of your S-Corp, you have to earn a reasonable salary or compensation. Essentially, this is the amount of money an S-Corp member pays themselves for performing their job. So what does reasonable mean to the IRS? The IRS stipulates that a reasonable salary must reflect book market standards and should be comparable to what you should offer someone else who is doing your job. This means that your salary should fall in the range of what other workers who reside in your area and work in your industry are getting paid to perform similar work. Remember, your salary is subject to both employment tax and income tax. While it may be tempting to pay yourself a smaller salary and take a larger distribution, the IRS pays particular attention to this aspect of S-Corps. Keep in mind that misfiling, even by a mistake, can result in back taxes and penalties. The IRS can also decide to tax your distributions as a salary. We'll go over the steps you can take to determine an S-Corp reasonable salary, as well as some examples of salaries. But first, let's take a look at whether there are any times you don't want to pay a reasonable salary. When you don't have to pay an S-Corp reasonable salary. As you've explained, a reasonable salary is generally based on the amount you would pay someone else for the same services, not profits or losses made by the company. That being said, there are situations where members of an S-Corp are exempt from paying themselves a reasonable salary. For example, you don't have to pay a reasonable salary if you aren't taking distributions or you cannot pay yourself the full reasonable salary. For example, if your net profit is lower than the amount of your reasonable compensation, then you can choose not to take a distribution and just receive wages until your reasonable salary is met. Finally, you could choose to take neither a distribution nor a reasonable salary. Bear in mind though, that if you wish to take distributions in the future, you will have to pay yourself a reasonable salary for the years you opted out for taking the one before you can receive distributions. So how do you determine a reasonable salary? The IRS guidelines can be vague, but we've pulled together a list of several factors you can use to determine a reasonable salary. Here's what you'll want to consider. First, the responsibilities and duties that are being performed. Next, the training and education of the person performing them. After all, someone with more experience and a specialized degree typically will be paid more. Also, consider the amount of time you or other owners have been with the company. Keep in mind your dividend history. Also look at comparable salaries for businesses, especially ones in your industry and geographical area. Consider whether you or other members will be part or full-time employees. Factor in the location of your business. The cost of living varies from city to city. 
What's considered a reasonable salary in a small town with a low cost of living might be quite different from what that same role plays in the high-end neighborhood of a major city. So now that you know what you need to consider when determining a reasonable salary, you'll want to gather some information about the compensation ranges in your field and area. Resources for choosing a reasonable salary. To determine what the market midpoint is for your job, you'll want to find examples of comparable salaries or what people are currently being paid to perform a similar job. The good news is there are several resources that can help you easily gather this info. Glassdoor is an online resource where people can view and review information related to jobs. One of the things Glassdoor features is company salaries posted by current and former employees. By looking at these salaries for jobs comparable to yours, you can use that information to set a reasonable salary for yourself. The Bureau of Labor Statistics is a government website with wage data from all over the US. You can search their database by job characteristics and difficulty, state or industry. And finally, you could connect with a compensation consultant. This is someone whose job is to design and implement compensation packages. A compensation consultant can research wage statistics and trends so you can be confident your information is accurate and up to date. We'll look at some examples of S-Corp reasonable salaries in a moment. But first, you may have heard of another way to determine S-Corp reasonable compensation, the 60-40 rule. So is it real or a myth? Ever heard of the term 60-40 rule thrown around in discussions of reasonable salaries? This refers to the idea that you take 60% of your revenue as a salary and the other 40 as your distributions. Although this may seem like a good rule of thumb, we caution you to keep in mind that this is actually an arbitrary formula. Also, the 60-40 rule cannot be used to justify your salary to the IRS. The fact is that while it might seem like an easy way out, it's better to take into consideration the complex factors that contribute to your salary and calculate your reasonable salary using the tools listed above. Now that you've calculated your S-Corp reasonable salary, how do you pay taxes on it? Like any salary, you'll need to pay income taxes on the reasonable salary you take from your company. You'll also pay payroll taxes or self-employment taxes on your salary since you're also a shareholder. Before I go over the IRS forms you'll need, know that you can find the links to all of them by clicking on the links below to our free, more comprehensive How to File S-Corp Taxes Guide. So what can your S-Corp generally expect to file at the end of the year? A W-2 wage and tax statement. This reports an employee's income and all taxes withheld from their wages. Schedule K-1, shareholder share of income, deductions, and credits. This shows how much of the profits each owner is allocated. And Form 1040, U.S. Individual Income Tax Return. This is your personal income tax. On your individual tax return, you'll need to use your W-2 to report your S-Corp salary and use Schedule E of your personal income tax return to report and pay personal income taxes on distributions. Meanwhile, your company will file Form W-3, Transmittal of Wage and Tax Statements. A W-3 summarizes an employee's W-2 for the Social Security Administration. Form 1120-S, U.S. Income Tax Return for an S-Corporation. This is a reportage of the business's income gains and losses, tax credits, and tax deductions. Form 941, Employee's Quarterly Federal Tax Return. This is filed every quarter to report taxes associated with employees. Form 940, Federal Unemployment Tax, FUTA Return. This document is for filing and reporting federal unemployment tax. Remember, S-Corp taxes can be complicated. We recommend using an accounting service like FreshBooks to help keep your paperwork organized. See our links below. S-Corp reasonable salary tax examples. Now that we've gone over some considerations to use when determining a reasonable salary, let's look at some examples of how you might determine a reasonable salary using different situations. For our first example, let's look at a higher net profit business. Say you're a member of a marketing S-Corp in Portland, Oregon. Your net profit is 125,000. Using Glassdoor, you see that the average salary of a digital marketer in your area is around $60,800 a year. In this scenario, you decide to pay yourself $65,000 for your wages and take a distribution of around $60,000. Now let's consider a lower net profit business. Say you're an owner of a programming S-Corp in Los Angeles, California. Your net profit is $70,000 a year before your salary. Glassdoor tells you that the average salary of a programmer in Los Angeles is $76,150 a year. Since net profits can't meet your reasonable salary, you choose to take out $71,000 for your salary and zero in distributions. While this would not meet your reasonable salary requirements, you won't be fine because you're not taking a distribution. Of course, you could also opt to leave all the money in your business and not compensate yourself, but you would need to make up for this retroactively by paying yourself in the future. Is an S-Corp right for me? If you haven't elected S-Corp status already, you might be wondering if an S-Corp is right for you. Here are some important facts to consider. 
Electing an S-Corp tax designation can provide tax advantages and tax savings for an LLC or corporation whose net income is high enough to pay its members a reasonable salary. S-Corps do require you to file additional forms at the end of the year and are subject to increased scrutiny from the IRS. So diligence is a must when electing to become an S-Corp. This is why many S-Corps choose to hire professional accountants. S-Corps are a great choice if your business makes enough to cover your reasonable salaries and have profits left over. Since these profits can be taken as distributions, you will lower your overall tax burden. Still considering starting an S-Corp? We recommend speaking with an accountant to learn more. Click on the link below to schedule a free consultation through 1-800-ACCOUNTANT. Thanks for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe so you can see more content like this. Truk provides useful information and free tools to help your business get started and grow. Don't forget to click on the links below for more free resources. See you next time.